Hello students, I'm Mr. Anderson. And I'm Miss Mayers. And together, we are going to explain to you what you are going to learn this school year. Are you ready? You bet I am. That's good, but I was asking our students. Oh. That's okay. Alright, so we're starting with geography. You know what that means. Study the Earth. It's people and places and seasons and equator and capybaras. Wait, what? A capybara? I like capybaras a lot. They're the world's largest rodents. What? And they're like a cross between a gigantic stub-tailed rat and a South American taxi from monkeys. Huh. Check it out. Huh, that is cute. But now I've got a geography question for all you. Right. Hit me. Can you name all the continents on Earth? Sure. In alphabetical order? Sure. In less than 10 seconds? Sure. Okay, go. Africa, Antarctica, Asia, China, Europe, North America, and South America. That's good, but you missed one. Wait, what? Which one? The smallest one. Australia. Crikey. So I did, mate. How did I forget the land down under? Where did that hat come from? What hat? Your... never mind. But I, I got seven. That's because you included China. China's not a continent. It's a country. I knew that. But don't feel bad. A lot of people get that wrong. China's not a continent. It's on a continent. What about Australia? Continent or country? It's both. It's a continent and a country. And an island. Alright, so we learned about geography. But then what? So after we learn about oceans, continents, latitude, longitude, globes, in summary, the study of our planet, we're going to learn about the men and women who sailed around it. Ah, explorers. That's the age of exploration. Did, did someone just change the color? Yes, all the units are color themed. Pay attention. Pay attention. Age of exploration. Right, so uh, explorers have been around for a long time. European medieval travelers like Eric the Red, Leif Erikson, and Marco. Polo! Yeah, and others like Ibn Battuta, Mansa Abu Bakr II, and Ibn Fo. But in the 1400s, this brave new trend of setting out to find India and China made some names famous, like Christopher Columbus, Vasco da Gama, and Ferdinand Magellan. And before them, the explorer of the Indian Ocean, the Chinese Admiral Zheng He. Right, and this new trend of reporting back that our world was much larger than previously believed is going to lead to our next unit, the Age of... Ultron? What? I knew that. Oh, the color changed again. That is when some empires like China and Japan begin their isolationism. While Europe goes on a rampage and takes over huge parts of the Americas, a lot of bloodshed is at the hands of per Portugal, England, France, but especially Spain. So that's when we're going to hear more about colonization and conquistadors. The Aztec Empire, the Inca Empire, Moctezuma and Pachacuti, as well as Hernan Cortes, Malinche, and Francisco Pizarro. Yes, and the Ottoman Empire, the Encomienda system, and the Atlantic slave trade. It's a lot. It is. But there's more to the Age of Conquest than that, right? Oh yeah, and I haven't even mentioned Sir Walter Raleigh, Bartolome de la Casas, the Lost Colony of Roanoke, Jamestown, the Pilgrims, the Wampanoag, and Queen Elizabeth I. Woo! And when power shifts toward Europe, especially from Spain to England's hands, then we start the next unit, the Age of Revolution. Enlightenment and Absolutism. Absolutely. Enlightenment. Yeah. Hey, the color. Uh, works for me too. <laughs> During Enlightenment and Absolutism, we're going to hear from English and French philosophers. Thomas Hobbes, Mary Wollstonecraft, and John Locke. Voltaire, Baron de Montesquieu, Jean-Jacques Rousseau. Thinkers who will challenge the traditional view that a country had to be ruled by a king. We will take a look at the English Civil War. Yeah, specifically the decapitation of King Charles I, enlightened despots like Maria Theresa of Austria, and Frederick the Great, and Catherine the Great. That's great. We'll see how the philosophy talked about in French salons paved the way for the next unit. The age of... now you can say it. Oh, yeah. The age of revolutions. Yes! There are so many revolutions. So revolution is any movement that causes great change. So these revolutions are major changes in the world. Let's see. Revolutions roll call! 
There's the American Revolution. Where we become our own country. The French Revolution. With wide-scale use of the guillotine. The Haitian Revolution. Led by Toisson La Overture. And the Latin America Revolutions. Where Spain and Portugal lose the war. Then there are a lot less violent revolutions. Oh yeah? Like what? Like the Industrial Revolution. Hello factories, textile mills, and overpopulation. The Scientific Revolution. Hello scientific method, inventions, and observation. The... Yes? I think that's about it. Right, that's, that's probably enough. Right, so then comes the age of imperialism. And that's when Europe reaches its greatest power. It starts gobbling up territory around the world. There's a scramble for Africa, the Berlin Conference, the tragedy of the Belgian Congo, not to mention the Opium Wars and the Boxer Rebellion, the Boer Wars, the British Raj in India, and the Suez Canal. Yeah, America gets in on it too, with the Spanish-American War and the opening up of Japan, which leads to the Meiji Restoration and the building of the amazing Panama Canal. This is when Italy and Germany become unified countries, and communism started by Karl Marx. With all this buildup of armies, navies, empires, anarchy, and nationalism, this is going to lead to one big war. A world war. So by this point, we will just about be hitting third quarter. December, January is World War One, Also known as the Great War. Brown color for this unit? I guess because the trenches the soldiers huh. fought in were all muddy. Trench mouth, trench foot. Trench rats, trench lice, poison gas, mortar rounds. Yeah, people going into the war thought it would be A, over fast, B, glorious, and something to celebrate, and C, an easy victory. It turned out to be... Uh, D, none of the above. World War I lasted from 1914 to 1918 and it resulted in about 20 million deaths and just as many injuries. World War I was the war that introduced airplane combat called dogfights. Pilots like the Red Baron, new weapons like shotguns and machine guns and tanks. It's the war that turned Russia into a communist country. And by the time it was done, so many empires had collapsed, they basically had to redraw the entire world and make up a bunch of new countries. That's crazy. So the world we live in and the map we use today, with its borders, is all because the winning countries of World War I decided to redraw the country's boundary. Basically, just after it had ended, World War I was called the War to End All Wars. They were hoping to never have another blo bloody conflict again. But... But didn't a second World War just happen, like, 20 years later? Yeah, the War to End All Wars, not the best thing. Europe started up a worldwide organization called the League of Nations to stop war from breaking out. But it happened again, especially because three countries wanted to conquer others. These were... Wait, what? why hasn't the color changed? Oh yeah, sorry. <clears throat> world War II. Ooh, cool. Black. This is dark. I like dark. Yeah, so anyway, where was I? Uh, three countries wanted to conquer... Oh yeah, and these were Japan, Italy, and Germany. They called themselves the Axis Powers, and at first they could not be stopped, conquering Europe and parts of Asia and Africa. The war started in the 1930s and ended in 1945, when the rest of the remaining countries eventually stopped them. Uh, world War II became the biggest, the bloodiest conflict in human history. Over 75 million people died. Over 11 million people died in the Holocaust, orchestrated by Adolf Hitler and the Soviet Union lost maybe 40 million. When it was finally China. over, the world had to be healed from all this destruction. And the two strongest countries that were together. left were the USA and the Soviet Union. And these two countries, for a while, were the only nations with super-powered nuclear weapons. They were like the captains of two teams that faced off against each other. Other countries depending on their government type, either joined up with USA or the USSR. Right on cue. This conflict lasted 45 years after World War II. It was a war between capitalism and representative democracy on America's side versus communism and dictatorship on the Soviet Union side. Yeah, but we'll go over what these terms mean later. 
But this war did not involve constant armed conflict between the USA and the USSR. Yeah, more like espionage, the space race, the arms race, and giving weapons to ally nations to start up proxy wars. Because it wasn't made up of a hot conflict where both sides use powerful weapons at their disposal, we call it the Cold War. It is an odd name. But while the Cold War was going on, many significant incidences happened, such as the Korean War and the Vietnam War. Spies like the Rosenbergs and the fear of communism taking over our country. New inventions like personal computers and WD-40 and satellite communication and GPS and the internet and interstate highways. And probably the most impressive, the launch of dogs and monkeys and humans into space, spacewalks, and finally our landing of men on the moon. But while the Cold War was going on, there was a lot else that was happening around the world. Right, and that's one of our final units. And this will take us into the fourth quarter. Yeah, the unit of new nations emerging. Otherwise called... We'll first learn about India that demanded that Britain leave it alone due to non-violent efforts from men like Mohandas K. Gandhi. India gets its wish, but at a very bloody cost of human life. Yeah, and then we'll take a look at South Africa, which only ends apartheid. That's the division of blacks and whites in 1994, and it begins the process of healing under the leadership of Nelson Mandela. We'll spend some time in Africa here. So many countries begin to rule themselves by the year 1960 after being mere colonies for Europe. But that's not all. We'll look at the conflict between Israel and Palestine and how so much of the division and conflict comes from the way that Israel was created after World War II. And that brings us to our last unit, which is called... Modern Conflicts. If it's in the news, we're going to learn about it. So, what does that cover? Uh, well, how about uh, China in the news, uh, diseases like COVID-19, North Korea, Ukraine, Russian interference. We will definitely run out of time before we run out of topics this year. Or environmental concerns, natural disasters, the cost of oil, national debt, acts of genocide, dictatorship. And we haven't even talked about what projects we're going to be involved in this year. Oh yeah, this year will be a hot minute. But now I've got a geography question for you. Hit me. Can you name the projects and fun activities we'll be completing in class this year? Sure. In alphabetical order? Sure. In less than 30 seconds? Sure. Okay, go. Bakery Day, Book Presentation Project, Constitution Day, Cooking Show Episodes, Countries and Capitals of Africa, Countries and Capitals of Europe, Current Event, Video Project, Declaration of Independence, Excerpt, Memorization, Dress Up Like a Pirate Day, Dress Up Like a Spy Week, The Family Life Interview Project, The Industrial Revolution Assembly Line, Latin American Revolution Figure Presentation, Mock Trial on Cortez versus the Aztec Empire, more Mock Trial on Colonel Dyer versus the British Empire, Revolution Cake Russian Revolution hit list, Scramble for Africa contest seminar, discussions on every topic imaginable, technology of the age of exploration, skit, triangle trade demonstration, and welcome to the trenches. <laughs> well, that was good, but it was just over 30 seconds. You want to try again? Well, I guess that's it. This is only a brief year at look glance, folks. We are so excited to learn about social studies with you this year. There's a survey attached to the video. Please let us know what you're excited about. Have any questions? Are you confused? Let us know in the survey. Right, Mr. A? Right. Well, on behalf of Mr. Anderson and from me, Miss Mares, we wish you a great start to the year.